Hi everybody, today I'm going to be showing you my Russian M1895 Nagant revolver. This is the sidearm that they had in World War I and even continued to use this up in the World War II where it was replaced by the Tokarev pistol. They still continue to use this in World War II because in some ways the revolver was more reliable than the Tokarev pistol in some of the frozen battlefields that they had. Also interesting, what did they use before they had the Nagant revolver? Well, they bought uh, Smith & Wesson designs from America. The Tsar wanted the revolvers that we had in America and bought or licensed Smith & Wesson and I think a few other companies to be built for the Russian uh, Tsar military at that time. One of the things that, that I like about collecting these Curio and Relic firearms is you can definitely see the history and philosophy of each country and how they do things. Now, as opposed to my other videos where I showed you the German Luger, the Germans are very much into this uh, precision machinery type stuff, and uh, the Russians are not so much. You know, the AK-47, the mosin Nagant rifle, uh, some of their, their pistols like the Makarov or a straight blowback pistol, very simple but rugged, and you have to admire that philosophy. When you look at this Nagant gas seal revolver, you see how the cylinder actually moves forward to seal that cylinder gap uh, to prevent any of the propellant gases from escaping this gas seal. That has a lot of moving parts to it and it makes the trigger pull very heavy. And when I first got this I was like, well that's unnecessarily complicated. It's like the Russians had a German design a revolver for them. But when you take the side plate off and look inside, which I'm not going to do here, you can see it in other videos, they do all this with a minimum of moving parts. They have only the trigger, there's a vertical sliding block, there's an abutment piece, and there's the hammer that pushes the cylinder forward. So only four main moving parts, and the way they did it was uh, definitely Russian in its kind of simplicity and ruggedness. They made this barrel to be 7.62 so that the machinery would be common with their Mosin rifle, the Mosin Nagant rifle. So all their machinery and stuff and how they do the barrels uh, could be common between the two. I, I think maybe the twist rate's different or something like that, but that's kind of interesting the way they chose that for production simplicity. This requires the use of special ammunition, which is this 7.62 Nagant style, and uh, no other gun uses it besides this. Uh, it has the bullet actually seated below the cartridge rim, and the cartridge rim expands, and this is what uh, would fill the forcing cone or that, that blocks that cylinder gap as it's fired right there, so none of the propellant gases escape. The only way to get these cartridges is to buy them from uh, one or two companies that still make them or reload them. So that's one of the things that's kind of kept people away from the Nagant revolver, I think. Uh, but you can buy this for around 100 bucks with a Curio and Relic license. One of the things about this is this is kind of the unholy hybrid between single and double action. Even though the trigger is double action, like we would have a modern trigger, it's pretty heavy. It's about 20 pound trigger pull or something silly like that. So in a lot of cases, it's just used as if it was a single action revolver. The loading gate is done like a single action revolver, so there is no swing out cylinder to take for granted as we have on double action revolvers. Notice that the cylinder will actually turn regardless of the position of the loading gate. Uh, so that's kind of one of the interesting things about it. It will always turn clockwise if you force it by hand. The only time it locks up is if you have the hammer back. That's where it moves forward for the gas seal. It is a seven shot revolver and these bullets are approximately 30 caliber. So they weren't considered, at least the commercial ammunition is considered to be kind of weak. From what I've heard, the actual military ammunition was pretty hot. I'm going to take you through the process of loading and unloading and show you how this thing works. To load the revolver, I'm going to open the loading gate. First I'm making sure there's no spent cartridges in there. And I'm going to put in these Nagant the ammunition one at a time. It takes seven shots. Reloading this thing is very slow. Uh, I can only imagine they expected the soldier to uh, either get his way back to his rifle or to be dead before he ever finished off the seven shots because uh, trying to reload this under fire, uh, I don't see how you'd be able to do it in any sort of timely fashion. The cylinder continues to rotate freely even with the loading gate closed. Don't worry, it'll index itself when you pull the trigger. Okay, we're loaded up. Target's downrange, ready to go. That's pretty hard to do one-handed. I'm telling you, this trigger pulls real hard. I'm going to try it single action, see if I can hit that Coke can. There we go. Yeah, double action is pretty useless on this thing.
missed. Got it. All right, I think I may have some shots left in here. I'm gonna take you through the process of how to extract the spent cartridges and unload it. With the loading gate open, be careful. The revolver can still fire and function just the same. The loading gate's just so you can get access to the cartridges. Keeping the barrel pointed down range for this whole operation. I don't know if you can see this real clearly. Let's see, how many of them have I hit? It looks like I hit them all. All right, the way this works is, there is a turn knob here you turn and pull this out. That's your extractor knob. It is not spring-loaded like some other cowboy action pistols are. You have to move it by hand. You pull this, push this in, you can push the cartridge out a little bit, you still have to pull the rest of it out by hand. So, do that index to the next position, punch that out. Pretty slow if you're in the trenches being shot at. Can't imagine anybody trying to do this under fire. Keep in mind that what they bought before this was the Smith & Wesson top brake revolver. The top brake, you just punch the top open, it all spills out, and you can put new cartridges in. So, um, at least you got seven shots. Okay, now I can turn it, make sure that each cylinder is, uh, each hole in the cylinder is empty. You see I'm completely unloaded there. I'm going to turn this back to put the loading rod back in place. That fixes that back in position. And I'm unloaded. So there is the M1895 Nagant Revolver.